Comedy. 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 Ciao. Welcome to the Comedy Hall. Perfect. Ciao guys, welcome Ciao to- guys, welcome to the comedy hall. What's up, guys? What up, Bea? What up, Jordan? What, what up, Bea? What up, Jordan? Yeah, yeah. sure. How was your day? I spent my entire day alone at home. Yeah, that's why you're giddy and you want to. I'm weird today. <laughs> okay, all right, cool. Uh, I spent my time uh, alone as well, editing some audio and stuff. But uh, I'm I'm not weird. That's a it's a regular thing for me. I like being alone. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. do you enjoy being alone, Jordan? Uh, yes, I also enjoy being with good friends, like we are now. Uh-huh. For instance, my friend Beatrice Brissano at Beatrice Brissano, <laughs> co-founder of The Comedy Hole, okay. and my friend Ariel Bielski right. at Ariel <laughs> Bielski, co-founder of The Comedy Hole. Right. And I'm at Jordan Thomas Gray, at Jordan Thomas Gray, co-founder of The Comedy Hole. All Welcome right. to The Comedy Hole, everyone. Welcome. Hello. Why, <laughs> so why, do you, why do you talk like... <laughs> an announcer? A, no, a noun. A, a noun. <laughs> a noun. Like yeah, a why person. do you talk like a noun? Yeah. yeah. All right. What's up, Jordan? Because you have some shit All you right. want to All right. get T- cracking. Today, so. I want to cover a very specific topic, and that's how to do your first five-minute stand-up set. Because okay. I think that's what people uh, most often ask advice about. And I think many people want to do a five-minute open mic set, but are intimidated and don't know how to even start. But like Jordan you. prepared a lot of uh, notes that yes. we will go through I, I today. Pre- so at least we have someone which is prepared, Ariel, today. We are not! Yeah, but I want to just like play patty cake with you. We're like, <laughs> la, 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 la. And Jordan's just like, quiet, kids. Yeah. So anyway, we have six, <laughs> six steps to go through. Uh, give you an overview right now. We're going to talk about how to find an open mic, then uh, about speaking to the organizer, writing your set, polishing your set, rehearsing your set, and then day of the show, what to do, is what we're going to get through. So I'm going to run through these guys in a very serious way, and you guys will uh, interrupt, tell me I'm wrong. Yes, and teacher. Sure, hey, teacher. I, I'm raising my hand. Can I ask a question? You may. Uh, should we also talk about our first times? We get, let's do that after. Okay. Because I want to get the, you know, okay. the nitty gritty cool. out of the way, and then we can riff, and then I will... Let go of the wheel. Okay. And we can be as erratic as we want to be. Teacher, I have to go poo. Uh, you have to wait. <laughs> oh. All right. Should, should we kiss? <laughs> Here's a note. <laughs> okay, guys. All right. Uh, first off, finding an open mic. If you're a member of the Comedy Hole community, you already know where the open mics are. Mm-hmm. But you might only think that there's ours. There's also an open mic on Sunday, yeah. and on Tuesday, uh, and on Thursday. So there's lots of open mics. If you just, just yes? where is the comedy hall? Because maybe someone didn't listen to the previous. Why don't you explain the comedy hall? Yes. So quickly we go there. We are the fa- co-founder founders of the founder. <laughs> Thunder. <laughs> Thunder. Of the Comedy Hall, which is a collective, comedian collective based in Warsaw. We produced a show, an international comedy show, uh, with sets from all over the world. And we have a bunch of shows going on in town. We have Ariel hosting a Tuesday show. We have me and Jordan hosting Wednesday shows. Both. And uh, we have both open mic and showcase uh, on and so that's what is the comedy hall, right? And of course, it's a community, and we of have a, friends. And there's a Thursday show hosted by Kamal, our that's friend. Kamal. Of, of course, true. I forgot. <laughs> now, when, but when you're asking, uh, when you're asking about the like finding a open mic, you're just talking about in any city, in any city, uh, in Europe in particular. Okay. So that's because I feel like that's what we know yeah. the most about, right? So uh, one thing to say is that there might not be. Any open mics in your city? And so you might want to move. So this is the, <laughs> <laughs> this right. is the to, first to, thing. To, to <laughs> Warsaw <laughs> or Barcelona <laughs> or Berlin. Or take a trip. Take a, take a train trip. Or or you can just uh, organize an open mic yeah. if there is nothing. But this is That was step point. two. Yeah. I mean, that's how I did it. I just organized an yeah. open mic. But if, if you've never done it, go ahead. Uh, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. yeah. But in general, I mean, the way I found it, even let's say I went to Berlin and did an open mic for the first time, I just Googled 
It seems like this answer for this question is just Google. Well, but let's also well, start okay. with the fact that, for example, mo most of the people, they start to do comedy because they go to an open mic yeah. and they see that, they, that the open mic is so bad that they can do totally. that. Well, not just, not just Google, because I've had people say that they Googled stand-up comedy and they didn't find us. Right. But Facebook groups, so expat groups in Europe are really popular. Sure. Almost definitely in your city, there's an expat group. And if you ask in that group, hey... Is there any comedy open mics in English? People will answer you. That's that's one way. Any other ways that people might be able to find open mics? Uh, on uh, Event Tribe. Uh, event Bright. Yeah. yeah. Oh right. Uh, yeah. Or there's uh, a couple of websites. Instagram. There's uh, that I forgot about. Maybe we can put them in show notes. There's okay. like oh, in some website. bigger city, there are there are also uh, websites specific for that get, that uh, collect all the open mics mm -hmm. in town, like in Berlin. But in general, if we talk about cities where the comedy scene is not that developed, so like maybe you don't know if there is an open mic. Uh, yeah, as you were saying uh, today, for example, a guy in the Warsaw Expat group asked. Uh, where he could join some stand-up English comedy show. So just ask uh, around. And I do know uh, soon, because I spoke to this guy who, was, uh, who contacted me in order to start a website for all of Europe and put together all the gigs, all the open mics in one website and kind of have this, um, whatever, also a collective yeah of places you could go and perform in major cities mm -hmm. in Europe. That isn't out yet, but when it is, I'll let you guys know, and then it'll be much, much easier to find it in Europe. I would Instagram. So I'd say most comedians in Europe that do English comedy are active on Instagram. So Instagram is probably a good, pretty good place to see if things are active. And that's how you use the internet, ladies yep. and gentlemen. <laughs> and that's step one. Well, step one. Step Not one only for six. porn. <laughs> use the internet. <laughs> Don't, also for yeah. comedy. Not and only for of porn. Of course, I'm sure that maybe there is also some, like, if you go on Pornhub and you write comedian. Yeah, totally. And maybe there is something. It's just a stand-up getting blown. That's all it would be. <laughs> just should I search right now? <laughs> yeah, let's should do I it. search? Yeah. All right, step two is signing up for the <laughs> open mic. Sorry? Uh, signing up for the open mic. So maybe, okay. Ariel, imagine you found your open mic Tuesday show, but you're just someone who wants to perform. How should right. they approach you? Um, so, I mean, here's the thing that I do for my open mic is, and I've said this before on this podcast, perhaps not on a episode that's been released yet, but uh, I always leave at least one spot for brand new comedians who've never performed. Uh, I do that because otherwise I'll just flood the night with people who have performed, who I've seen before, who are able to perform. Whereas a first time performer might shit the bed and be terrible. So why not give them a chance? And so I do leave one open. I don't know if every open mm. mic does that, but in theory, technically they should have something like that. Yeah, there are two main types of open mics. There's the ones where you sign up beforehand where you have to speak to the organizer because it's a it's all set days beforehand so you have to get them line up maybe a week ahead. And there are show up, go up open mics right. that are more common I think in Berlin okay. and other cities. And so I know for myself when I first did it in Toronto I called the comedy club and asked if they had an open mic where a first time performer could perform and they said yes and you have to call in two weeks in advance. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did there for let's say my open mic. It's much more accessible. Also, it's not a, strictly a comedy club. I DJ there and that kind of stuff. And so, uh, and it's a bar. So at the show, I've had performers afterwards ask me exactly that. How do you, how do you sign up? And I just tell them, yeah, I've got a spot for you. If you want to sign up, you just tell me when, and then you sign up. I would say, though, stick to your, stick to it. Because lots of people say, okay, definitely, I'll contact you. And either they never do, or they say, okay, I'll perform this upcoming week. Let's say it's the 9th of October. I'll perform 9th of October. And then the 9th comes, and they're like, ah, oh, sorry, how about, the, how about next week after that? And I'm uh, anal about time. <laughs> uh, it means like I'm I'm like strict about time, and I get all upset because if someone's the anus is strict. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. He only has anal for five minutes, and five minutes only. It's a it's a weird thing in English where it's yeah, it's it, when you're really strict and you're like, hey, you have to be here on time, and ha uh, and all pissy. It's like you have something up your ass. That's why I think it's anal. So, so pick a week and do that week. 
Don't chicken out. I've I've met people who yeah. are like, oh, this week, oh, next week, oh, next week, oh, next week. Just pick a fucking day and, and stick do it. to that and write your set because if you keep putting it off, you will just never do it. And that's what was wonderful about signing up in two weeks. Uh, in two weeks when I had to do it in Yuck Yucks in Toronto where I was like, can I sign up? They said, yeah, in two weeks. And then I wrote down the date and I was like, okay, great. And I'm signed up. And then I was just fucking nervous for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I was still nervous when I performed and all that stuff. You'll still have nerves. Those will never go away, whether you do them next week or you do it in a month. It'll always be nervous. So, yeah. And regarding this, just have enough time, you know, to prepare it. Like if it's the day after and you don't feel comfortable, you can ask to go on on like a week sure. or two. But in general, how uh, you request the spot, it can be that you go, as you were saying, on a show and you talk with the uh, with the host or most of the shows, they have uh, this request to ask in the discussion tab uh, on the Facebook event uh, to just write spot, please. And, uh, and yeah, that's another point, which is very good, actually. Everywhere is like this. Yeah, I know uh, that's how it works. Beside in, in here, maybe in yeah. smaller. And in Berlin, places. it's like that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And I know for for myself, if you say, hey, can I perform next week? Sometimes I have a full roster and I can't do that. So it isn't a bad thing to say, can I perform in one month? If you are nervous and you're like, I need to write and sit down, it's totally fine to be like in one month because it just gives the organizer something. Oh, it's set over there. So that, that gives mm -hmm. me... Let more brain space for something else. I don't have to worry about having a... But when you performed the first time, uh, before going to the host, did you already have like some ideas or it was just like, oh, I want to try. I mean, I first ask the spot and then I write the set. How I, was for you? I think, I oh, know I had, I had always jokes. Like I, like I told you um, before that I had this notebook that I wrote jokes since I was like 12, 13, 14, something like that. And so I had stuff. And so it was just basically organizing those for a five minute set. And, you know, and I'm still not doing well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a rough idea of what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And then the time pressure of doing it a week later, I spent that weekend, okay. essentially the whole weekend, like yeah. uh, writing and rehearsing it. But when you signed, Bea, when you signed up, you had nothing and then you had to write? No, I had some ideas of a topic uh, because it was funny, but some funny things happened to me right like a week before I went to my first comedy show here in Warsaw. And I started to think, oh, that's very funny. Oh, that's very funny. And then when I went to the show and the guy said, if you feel brave, uh, just come like, let me know and I will put you in the lineup. Uh, then I was like, oh, maybe I have something. And maybe I can use those stuff that I found funny in my first set. Wait, did you go up? Someone said, hey, if you feel funny, come up. And you went up that time? or No, was, no, no was I went up week. like a week after. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so it was afterwards. All right, so yeah, there you go. That's how you uh, set up your first five minutes, I guess. Was that the question? Yeah, so we, we've covered how to find an open mic and we just covered how to sign up. Yeah, yeah. all right, fine. Step three is writing your set. Um, okay. So writing your set. All right. Yeah. So I have some advice about this, but maybe we'll start with Bia. Talk about how you wrote your first set. Oh, okay. So uh, how I wrote my first set. Let's start with the fact that I didn't watch a lot of English stand-up comedy in my life before actually, before actually saying, oh, I want to perform. So I was not like a stand-up comedy fan, big fan before. I was just like, okay, I watched something, but not. Not much. Yeah. So when I knew that I had to perform, I I started to go like to spend my entire days watching any possible uh, stand up comedy in English uh, video on YouTube about the topic I wanted to talk about, not to copy, of course, but to understand how writing jokes. Okay. So like to understand what was how they were constructing the sentence, for example or how long it has to be, uh, the, the sentence, in order to arrive to the punchline. Uh -huh. uh, and, uh, and Who did you pick for the comedians? It was just random, or did you know some names? No, I, I mean, now I know them, they are famous, but I don't know at the time. It so you just like, wrote stand-up comedy uh, on YouTube kind of thing? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. And I started to get addicted with all the videos, and for like a week, the, it, I, I, I was like working and eating comedy. 
Gotcha. Yeah. Like the Matrix. Yeah. You're just loading it into your brain. Yeah, I agree. Yes. It's important to watch stand up before doing it just to get a sense of the cadence, like the structure of a joke, premise, setup, punchline. And like just the way of speaking on stage is different than the way of speaking usually. Yeah, that's Uh, that's absolutely true. There is one thing that, especially for a brand new person who's never done it, uh, you will see, you're seeing professional comedians doing Mm. most of the time. I guess you could do right now on Instagram or TikTok, someone who's just like doing crowd work or just a, you know, a comedian who just put it out. And isn't necessarily professional. It seems like a lot of amateur comedians are putting out their stuff. But like watching a pro, pro, let's say you're watching Bill Burr's special. It's like well-crafted, a guy who's been doing it for over 20 years, comedy. And it might be intimidating a little bit. So keep in mind, these people have been doing it for a long, long time. So don't get intimidated by an incredible joke. Just kind of get the feel of how they do it, I guess. And write what you think is funny. Like, it might help to sort of imitate a comedian you like a little bit, but write jokes that that you think are funny, hopefully other people do as well. Yeah. 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 And also, when it comes down to it, it'll be the audience that laughs or doesn't laugh, and that's the whole point. So unfortunately, or fortunately, part of this thing is that we are doing it in front of a live audience to find out if it's a good idea because there's tons and tons of times where I was like, oh, this makes me laugh so much. And then I do it and no one gets it. And I re-listen and I have to be like, oh, wait, I missed this point. I see why they didn't quite get what was going on in my head. Let me redo it. And then I redo it in a better way and people are laughing and that's the point. But Mm -hmm. I had to Mm -hmm. have people be like, what the fuck is he talking about at first? And if I have, uh, so if I have to think about this, I think the first set, it's easier to write if you have a topic. So, because w- the more you do comedy, guys, the more you sometimes just write a joke that you will put into your set, right? But when you write the first time, you don't have much jokes, maybe. You have you have to think about like a topic yeah, to talk about and put jokes in this five minutes set because it's easier I, in my opinion to follow if we like for example my first set was about dick mm-hmm. of course and your recent set no and, <laughs> yeah, and, and the last few sets actually my my um, <laughs> and it's not because <laughs> come on and not because uh, so it was not really like it was not about dicks it was more about I mean it's it, dicks was an excuse to talk about something else but okay. I started as like to have something funny, you know. Of course, sex is usually start easy to start with because every it's funny in general. Everybody relates to sex. So sex is like the safe door you start. Yeah. Okay. But you can talk about sex in a funny way or not in a funny way. And right. it was funny. So uh, I, I think it's easier to start. You have a topic. You want to talk about your dog, your grandma story, whatever, uh, your experience in the Polish sauna, how it was for me. And uh, and then you put jokes. Yeah, I, I think it's good advice to choose maybe an easier topic. Like my first set was just about being an American in Poland, which is a little bit hacky, but people related to it. Yeah. And as I've said on this podcast before, it went amazing. And also with every- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a brag. That That's a brag. Um, also, I would say though, there's always an exception to the rule. Mm-hmm. Always. And like, there are things that you're, I would agree absolutely for myself about what you guys just said because there are certain topics where I was like, oh, I'd love to talk about this, but I can't figure it out right now. Or when I was first starting, oh, I can't figure it out and I, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. And I have to wait until I work on my craft a little bit better to be more comfortable on stage to figure out the jokes. But there's always people who can do it off the bat. And so like, if you do think you're one of those people, I mean, you doesn't mean you have to stick to any rule specifically. Yeah. It's but following a structure uh, for someone that never started. It's it's easier. Like for example, uh, after a few months, I started comedy. I went in Italy and I went to a workshop of a Italian comedian, Filippo Giardino. He's famous in Italy, and he's very uh, kind of what your his sets are like from. Uh, the open and the closure are linked. Okay, so you follow the the story, let's right. say. 
And uh, he, what we did during this workshop, and maybe you guys, if you're listening, you can do it at home. Uh, first, we were thinking about what we want to talk about. What 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 do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about something, uh, uh, your life as an American in Poland? Um, or you want to talk about what is the political situation in your country? Whatever. Right. Or just your, you went for work with your dog. <clears throat> and then, uh, so we started to write. And we had, we, and he suggested us to put an X, an X, every time we thought there was a punchline. Right. Okay. So maybe, so to have a, a, a topic and then blocks. And then mm. in these blocks, writing uh, the jokes as closure of each block. Uh huh. I see. I see. And then we were comparing with other people that were in the workshop uh, because working, I mean, sitting with the others, it's always good. So you can maybe try your set with your girlfriend or friends mm -hmm. before going up on stage. Yeah, that's a good that's call. Step four, polish your set. So, so continuing. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, continue, continuing, <laughs> continuing step three. Just, <laughs> just a few more notes. I, You're so lame, Teach. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. Are you, were you done? Yes. Okay. Are you done? Are you, you done? Are you done, I'm B? Done. Are you done? I'm I think it, it's teach. probably helpful to watch five minute late night sets because five minutes is very different than an hour special they might watch. So watch a lot of five minute sets, see how they get in really quick. Uh, standard advice is to say something about yourself to start, just to humanize you, either something self-deprecating or just something about your identity. Uh, what else? Come yeah, there are, there are certain topics though um, that I totally, I did think like, okay, there's universal topics such as death, let's say, but you have to, like Jordan said before, what's funny to you? Because there could be something very funny about death. But if you're just doing it because you're like, well, this is a universal topic, everyone gets it. It might not be the best way to start. Because there's some extremely funny jokes. Like I love a joke about Pop-Tarts by Brian Regan. And it's so funny. And it's it's not really universal, but it's he just does it so well. And it's so, so funny. Mind you, he's one of the best ever. But... Um, but find something funny that's for you. Maybe it is just feeding birds in the park. And, you know, it doesn't have to be about such something so extreme about like death. When you make friends laugh in conversation, like what kinds of things make your friends laugh? Like what's funny about you? And mm. could, yeah, could, okay. be, could be nothing. I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah, it um, can be. Okay, what's next, teacher? Uh, I just <laughs> want to say one last thing on writing your set. The most common mistake I see people make with their first five minutes, uh, only having done this a year, but having seen enough people do this, uh, jokes are not stories and stories are not jokes. Like, I think people often go up and they do a five-minute story yeah. without writing any jokes in it because they think the whole idea of the story is funny. They just got into a funny situation and they think that telling a five-minute story about a funny situation is a stand-up set mm -hmm. and almost always bombs. So you have to put in jokes. Like jokes are different things than stories. And you got to, if you tell a story, make sure that there's a joke, joke, joke every like 30 seconds at least. Do you agree? Yeah, I do agree. Although, I mean, again, it's just like I do live by the rule that there's always an exception. Sure. Uh, it depends. If you are, if you feel you're naturally funny and you think your friends are, if your friends are like, oh man, you're so funny, you should do stand up. And you do have a good story and then you go up and it bombs. I mean, that's okay to try because you'll be like, oh, I get it. I didn't have that. But also because Jordan, for example, Arya has a uh, different type of the way he structures his jokes. Uh, he's more storyteller than punchline itself. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, I think okay. you have more like you tell the story and you, you tell the story so well that it's funny the way you're telling your story. You know? I'm just saying I've never seen someone go up first time and, first do, time. A oh, yeah, and yeah. do a story and, and going and, well without yeah, jokes yeah, yeah. and have it go well. Yes. Like the people yeah. where it goes well, very intentionally put in jokes. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're I see what you're saying. Because actually, because I told a story recently where I, I just knew it was an awesome mm -hmm. story. However, I'm comfortable on stage yeah. Yeah. and I know where to pause. And I kind of figured, you know what, I'll find some jokes in the middle of it. And so I I did. Yeah. It wasn't perfect, but this story went well. People liked the story, but 
if you were just starting out and you told that, if you didn't get a laugh 30 seconds in, you probably would have started panicking a little bit and then gotten tense. And then the audience would have reflected yeah, that. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. I would have been, ner- yeah, you'd see the nerves. Yeah. Oh no, the story isn't going well. And I'm all like. Yeah, but in general, you do comedy because you want to be funny. So don't forget that your objective yeah. is to make yeah. people laugh. Absolutely. Uh, so of course, do write something that it's funny for you, but try to put your like your set into other people's shoes. This this brings us to number four: polish your set. Uh, try it in front of friends. If it only makes you laugh, if friends just <laughs> if Ariel's making faces, I just sent Beatrice a note. The teacher's talking. <laughs> Does he like you? <laughs> It, it says, says, I should answer. Oh, it says, you like me, yes, no? Okay, go ahead and answer. Um, oh, wow, the teacher's in on it. That, this never happens. Usually teacher's like, hey, stop passing notes. I love drama. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so polishing your set. Uh, I have a few notes here. Remove boring bits. Like any dead space. Like this part? <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> okay. Ariel. Uh, you can edit this out. Uh, re- any dead air. If you go longer than, I want to say, 30 seconds without an interesting detail or a joke, that part probably shouldn't be in there. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. There's lots of parts where you think it's part of the story. Like, actually, that's a huge thing about stories in general. That, for instance, I told a story where I walked into a person's place and in the real thing, his girlfriend called and told him to uh, to give me a something for my birthday. But for the story on stage, there's really no reason to say that she called me because it doesn't add anything to the story. So all I said is that he gave me something for my birthday. Mm-hmm. So I skipped that part. Yeah, it's a lie. Or it's not true in the story technically, but it just gets to the point. Get to A to B as fast as possible. If there's a detail in there that doesn't matter uh, and doesn't enhance the joke, doesn't enhance the story... Uh, just get rid of it. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Simplify. And it's different uh, if you, maybe you did uh, comedy in another, maybe in your own language. Let's suppose we are talking with expats that maybe someone did comedy in their own language or they listen to comedy in another language. It differentiates. For example, in Italy, we have much less rhythm versus English because of the way we speak. It's different. Uh, and when I go to Italy, people say, oh, now you, for sure you have written much more than us. So I think that English comedy anyway, it's always good also for all the other type of comedy, all the other uh, comedy in other languages because it gives rhythm. And then if you learn to have the, the right rhythm, because if you put jokes at one point, you will see that the that the audience will be on your side and will think that you are funny. And then even if you have a less powerful joke, it will be funny anyway and it will end. Mm-hmm. Or maybe not. Yeah. Or maybe you will bomb. Or maybe you'll bomb. Also, just update for the audience. Uh, for my question, do you like me? Bea wrote back, maybe. Oh, <laughs> so, the drama continues. Drama continues. Uh, what helped me, and this might not help you, and again, everyone is different, but I had some backup plans and contingencies for if jokes didn't land. Uh-huh. So if jokes didn't land, I would have a tag prepared, just something to say after the joke um, to explain it more or enhance it or just move along. Uh, yeah, that's a very good, yeah. that's a that's a good one. I definitely have done that for jokes. Yeah. I did that once for a joke. It was a joke about um, gay rights and about where's the line. Like the, always for people who are like, oh, I don't believe in gay rights because then what? Where where's the line? What are you going to marry dogs next? And for the joke was basically, where's the line? Line is such an easy thing to draw. You're never in school being like, here's a line. Oh, it's a balloon. And if people didn't laugh at that, I had like, oh, I guess you guys were just fucking experts at lines or whatever. <laughs> like, Just have something that that might not be a joke that people laugh at. Yeah. yeah. Contingency yeah. plans. I make fun of myself. Like, for example, oh, I I spent seven hours writing this joke that right. didn't land. Yeah. That's you good. know, like something like that. You can make like fun that. of the joke. Yeah. is always a good, easy out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And makes you also be more like human on stage. And that's a huge thing what we were talking about before is like, I mean, comfort with the fact that a joke might not mm-hmm. go well because that's the whole point. You never know. You never know. And that's what we're doing. We're, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, she's just kissing the mic. Um, but, <laughs> but... 
yeah, it might not work. And so that's the whole point. So be prepared for that. And the more you're comfortable with that, the more the audience is okay that that didn't work out. Like every week when I perform and host on Tuesday, I'll do a joke that doesn't work. And I'm hosting, so I have to go back up. But like, as long as I'm like, ah, whatever, that joke didn't work. No one feels awkward that, oh no, that joke didn't work and he feels terrible about it. If I feel great, I'm having a good time. It doesn't matter. Last thing to say on part four, polish your set, is uh, really kill your babies if you need to. So there might be a part in the joke that you really, 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 really like, but if it's not serving the joke and might even just derail the whole thing, be comfortable with removing it. A bit tricky because, again, you never know, but uh, yeah. Also, try it out a few times because it might be that one time you said it wrong or the audience was not was really tired or something. Yeah. So try it out a few times. But for the first set, maybe... Is it fair to say don't be too risky? I don't want to say that. No, I don't think... Yeah, do risk as much as you want. It just, yeah. And really, if you but are accept risking, that it might not work. Exactly. Yeah. Just if you are risking, <laughs> yeah. it might not work. Okay, so number four, quite controversial. So ignore all what I said about... What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Kids, put phones away. Be- all right? <laughs> Give me the phone. We've been keeping phone. saying, we'll never know. we we'll never know. Give me the phone. Oh, I guess. <laughs> Beatrice. <laughs> Beatrice Rosano, give me the phone. we we'll never know. we we'll never know. Jen sound, Campbell, Macha, get down. I would call your parents, but they don't speak English. Uh, <laughs> All right. That's true. <laughs> okay. Uh, they made it. Closing me. in. Number five. Number five out of six, rehearsing. Uh, so, how do you rehearse your sets, Ariel? Or think the back to when set. you first started. First time. Your first time. Yeah. Rehearsing it. Rehearsing your first set. Well, uh, I'm the type of person, and I think a lot of people are, where I think by pacing around. So whenever I'm on the phone and I have to be in a conversation, I stand up and I walk around. Uh, so basically, nowadays I do it differently, but you, you just get up and hold something like a mic because you're going to have to be doing that and try and get as close as you would without an audience. So you don't have, maybe not look in a mirror, maybe do if you think that's going to help you to, if you're making silly faces and you want to make a really silly face and you think, okay, that's the one, I guess you could do that. But I would say, yeah, just rehearse it by actually standing up and holding a mic because if you're sitting down and writing and then you're memorizing like that, you will be on stage in front of a crowd. It'll be completely different and you might lose yourself. But a when bit. I rehearsed the first time, I was holding a shampoo. Yeah, hold a fake, holding a fake mic, I think, actually helps. Mark Norman talks about this too. Yeah, yeah he'll just walk around with a with a brush. Yeah, yeah with a brush or yeah, because well. yeah, because you're in front of an audience and you will be with a your mic. Your body language matters too. Yeah. yeah, and also like in the beginning the mic, there's a lot of things, a lot of components in the mic that you have to move around. You have to take it out of the stand and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, and Jordan's pointing. He's like, I wrote this down. Day of the show, this next section. All right, Skipping ahead. We'll come back to it. All right, I guess no natural conversation is (laughs) allowed. No, once we're done with this. Jordan, this podcast is over. (laughs) Once once we're done with this, guys, we can bullshit as much as we want. We got to stay on task. We're almost there. But he was not bullshitting. (laughs) He was just just getting out of turn. Okay. (laughs) So crazy. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Uh, Jordan says he has autism, but we just think he's an asshole. Uh, <laughs> Jordan. You just, he you has just a insulted song. an autistic guy. He has a song about no, that, saying, by the way. What, what? He has, he has a song about being an asshole. Being an asshole. No, I'm saying that because I've met lots of autistic people who are very, very nice people. Oh, I'm nice. All right. I just want to get this done. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, I love how I'm coming off. Also, don't care. Okay, uh, rehearsing. the The main thing I would say is rehearse it, drill it into your brain. But once you have, let go. Like uh, know it by heart, but give yourself some space. Rehearse it like a couple days before. Really drill it in, and then revisit it the day of. But don't drill it, drill it, drill it, drill it that day, I would say, because then you're going to recite it robotically. What uh, do you think about that? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Again, yeah. it all depends on your style. Yep. And I know for myself, I did improv before um, before I did stand-up. Well, not really, but like I was really doing improv a lot. And my second time I went up, which was years and years after I went the first time, and then years and years afterwards, I did it for the first time here. So I did kind of an improv set doing stand-up and it went very well because I was so 
used to doing improv. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was the style itself was kind of like making fun of the audience, making fun of myself, but like completely improv with a little bit of structure. But I didn't do it that way. Whereas the first time I ever did it was absolutely like drilling it into my head. And about that, there are techniques of like, uh, like scientific techniques where if you do take a nap or sleep mm -hmm. after you memorize, then it'll be stuck in your head more. So yeah. day before, much better than day of. Yeah. yeah. Totally. I mean, I the first time I did it, I rehearsed only the day of the show. Uh, but because I was afraid to forget it. Like if I rehearse it like two days before, I would forget it. So it's there is still for me an exception. Like it depends. Yeah. And then I remember it fully. Um, but for sure, rehearsing it in front of the mirror helps. Rehearse it not until you get it right once, but until you can't get it wrong. And then you're just going to be more comfortable on stage. And still you might freeze. And I would advise having notes somewhere, but try not to look at them. I, just I, as a backup, I, I, like a for parachute. For me, the first time... You should not have notes. Sure, but having them in your back pocket, just knowing that, but I think if makes you know, people a little more comfortable. I think if you know that you have them, your brain is more willing to like, if you give up, you just say, oh, I will get my notes that are in Pe my pocket. People are different. I think some people that are especially anxious, it's okay. terrifying to do that without notes. I do, I, yeah, I see both both ways, but I'm more like Bea because I'm like, oh, okay, I have this backup. And yeah. then all I'm thinking about is, Oh, I have this backup, you know? And I had so my backup on my arm, my first set. I looked at it once. Right. It's not noticeable. Watch yeah. And so me and Pei are different. Yeah. And then different Jordan is different. different. Everybody's mean. different, guys. Yes, yes. We're all different. But the good things of comedy is that all the weirdos. We're all weirdos are, in different we ways. We are all weirdos and we are all well accepted in this war. I'm normal. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I feel like you guys don't accept me and my overly controlling... Uh, no tendency to, no, we to, to no. steer sure. this podcast. Okay, all right. Let's go. Day of the fucking show. The sh day has arrived. What the fuck do you do? And now it's time for Ariel's mic technique talk. Mic technique talk? Yeah, you were talking about the mic earlier. Uh, I stopped you. Oh, 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 okay. What was I talking about? No, I, <laughs> uh, I think it's basically, yes. The One of the biggest things... Even for me, when I was, uh, you know, I did it for, let's say, a few months, I had a bit w that I had to do with a mic, like hitting myself over the head or something like that. And it's really, you know, it's an extra kind of additional nervous thing that you're adding on to yourself because it's a physical bit that you don't just have to stand there and hold the mic and speak. Instead, you're taking it out of the stand and doing something else. Um, so it will be a little bit more nerve wracking, even though it seems like such a small thing, like it's just a mic and it's just whatever you should be able to take it out and hit yourself over the head with it if you need to. But it is, it is weird because you're on stage and you're fumbling and you, you might take more time than you realize you would have because you take it out of the stand, the, the cord falls off, you have to plug it back in or something. And now you're like fumbling and, Oh, I'm so nervous. Keep in mind that you just have to have practice with that, but that is something that might happen is you fumbling with the mic or something getting tangled or you can't get it to get higher or s small little shitty things will happen. If you can uh, show up early, and I think I did this, just like play with the mic a little bit before the show totally. even happens just so you know what it's like to be on stage. You know how to put it in and out of the holder. You know how to adjust the stand. Yeah. Just because mic stands are different. It's a silly thing, yeah, but yeah. mic clips are different. But try to practice with that mic an hour before the show if you can. Yeah, talk to talk to the host. The yeah. host will probably, like, I yeah. definitely people have said that to me. And I said, yeah, absolutely, go up there mm -hmm. and, and yeah. fuck around a little bit. I mean, bit. I, I think I the first time I removed the stick from, like, the place where it was on the stage just to move it not to have it in like exactly in front of me. The it mic was, stand. Yeah, the mic stand. It was, uh, I guess, like the after a month I did come, I started comedy mm -hmm. uh, in Italy. I believe it was, it happened there because maybe I felt more comfortable with the language or whatever. So I just moved the mic. And then from there, I understood that actually is the best because you go there. And if you, if you can do it from the first time, it's, it's, 
it's amazing, but no worries. Like it, actually moving the mic stand is the 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 most complicated thing to do when you start. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. not even the the writing your set. Yeah. It's the ma moving the mic stand because it's heavy sometimes <laughs> because you have the cable of the mic. And um, you didn't think of it. You're only yeah. thinking of your set and your jokes, and then there's this thing that's electronic equipment and a physical thing that's in front of you and you're like, oh, I didn't think of this. Oh, and now you're thinking about something completely different than your jokes and then you just forget your jokes maybe. It's quite possible. I disagree. I think writing your set is harder than moving the mic stand. I'm not saying it's harder. It's just here's something that you didn't but, think of, you know? Yeah. But on the, on the mic stand, about the mic stand. Do, don't hide behind the mic stand. So move the mic stand if, a, to the side. So many people, when they start, they take the mic off the stand, they stand behind the stand and it's like such a but because a, they are don't think about the fact mm -hmm. of moving the yeah, stand yeah. because that's what that's why I'm saying the first thing that it's stage presence is moving the stand like Absolutely. if you move yeah. the stand you have already 10 points gained yeah. for nothing yeah. right yeah totally but if you don't do it the first time it's completely understandable the audience yeah but the audience they they notice those things even though they don't notice they're noticing Like if you're behind yeah, the yeah. mic stand, it's just one of those little things that the audience is picking up on like, oh, this person. Yeah. It, com it comes from uh, like, I know I did theater in high school and there's stuff like being upstaged, you know, and you never have your back to the audience. And so if you are taking the mic out of the mic stand, move the mic stand away from you because there's something in front of you that to, to is side. drawing attention. And just like Jordan said, the audience might not notice it, but they do notice it. So Don't put it behind it. you. Move it just to the side, just a little bit to the side. Or, or if you're not going to use it, and yeah, you could put it behind you, but oh, like, but then you're like turning away. Two meters from the audience away. And, okay, this is pretty hard. For, I, I for take the it way back, I, for example, for the way I, get, I am on stage, that I walk, like I, uh, I walk from left to right. Sometimes I cannot just put it like on my side. I need to put it like two meters away. Right. From right and and stage. like. Uh, for instance, Jasmine, who comes to the shows and performs, and I'm sure we'll have her on this podcast. So, uh, Founder of Comedy it. Social. Oh, okay. Um, so she would ask me to move the mic stand for her before she goes up on stage. And I asked her why, and she was like, it's just heavy. And I was like, well, I guess. It's not really that heavy. But I was like, all right, if you feel like that. And I was moving it for her, but I would always kind of forget. And so I would fumble with it and move it out the way while she's coming up on stage. And then I just stopped doing it because I was like, wait a minute, it's just because you're nervous. It's not because yeah. it's heavy. It's not heavy. It's like, it's an extra little thing that you have to do. I so. think most hosts, I wouldn't ask the host for much your first time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. No, uh, that's, that, also that's because really the first time you don't even think about it. Yeah, you, you don't. don't think that there is a fucking mic stand that <laughs> okay. will be there. Can I say fucking <laughs> yeah, no. mic stand that is we, there we and it should be moved? Mic, no, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's very important. It's there are, oh, I gotta turn actually, mic. She's getting heated. There are comedians. <laughs> I'm getting hit. Uh -huh. um, Where's my note? <laughs> there are actually comedians that still, not first timers, they don't move their mic yeah. and yeah. this. And I don't ex accept like kind of when you are high experience and you don't move your mic. But at the beginning, is completely normal. Actually, yeah. when you realize that you are moving your mic, you are getting, you are improving. That's that's a very good sign of improvement. When you move your, your mic stand. And again, if you... <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. No, 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 That's totally yeah. Cool. Norm yeah. McDonald did it and he's one of the yeah. best ever. So Yeah. You can also do that. Okay. Okay. In, in general, it's important to have fun. All right. Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, did you write Jordan. this? I, I, <laughs> did I, you I, have I, to write I this? I said let go and have fun and I underlined have fun. All right. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, it's important. Because you don't don't recite your set, perform it. You know what I mean? Like be present. Because when people are up there, the most awkward stand-up sets are when people are like clearly just dead, no energy, reciting a set from memory, like nervously. Yes, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Mm -hmm. Beatrice? Can I talk or yeah, should yeah. I shut up you, because otherwise can, I will talk too much? You can, no. talk, you can talk only if it's about moving mic stands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never was a good kid at school. Um, my head was in clouds. Me too. And Jordan was a great student, obviously. 
<laughs> I I think that the being present, uh, maybe Jordan, maybe for you it's different, but the being present, it's very hard for some people. For oh, me, yeah. as well, it was easy because I am in general like social in groups. So for me, it was fine. But there are people that are actually extremely shy in social environment and but they are very funny they write their set and they are just like you know repeating their set and we have comedians now that they just rehearse their set not like and the first time i think it's yeah yeah i think because we are getting to a point where we're not just talking about the first tech teacher i mean first uh first time you go up because uh a lot of the stuff is um a lot of the stuff you have to Sorry, Bea was grabbing her boobs and it was distracting, Bea. And so Ariel started grabbing um, his boobs. Uh, th- well, a lot of the stuff is like, you will get used to it and oh, we can't tell you that, the, like there's lots of things you would have to remember in order to do it perfectly. And a lot of it comes from experience. And here's where just people are so different that a lot of this advice is only going to make sense for one group of people and then other advice works for other people. Um, I'm more of an anxious person around this stuff. I want to be completely prepared and uh, I can't just go up and wing it unless right. I'm drunk. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, uh, and have fun. Yeah, that's absolutely true. But your first time, you might just be too nervous to have fun yeah. no matter what. Well, you're not so. failing if you, if you have won't. fun. But it's important to try to relax because the audience is going to reflect the energy you're bringing up. And if you're tense, uh, they're going to be tense just because that's how the reflection works. Right. The audience performer. Okay. Reflection. You know what I mean? I, I had a friend and uh, he was qu- kind of experienced in Italy, but every time before uh, going up on stage, he would do some like, like yeah. some of those exercises, mm-hmm. uh, which actually when I do them, they are very helpful when I go on stage mm. just to get more <laughs> relaxed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Jordan, yes. don't do it. Don't jo- ever do I, this I, again. I started. I started a set with this uh, Rakieta with with doing and, right, and it, that set went really well. I mean, he a couple of my last sets have not, but I, I did it on stage, and it, it weirdly people were like, "Oh, this is weird," and they were invested, and then it kind of loosened them up. Don't, um, maybe don't do that though. I, I think. <laughs> gen- I mean, in general, it was a rule to like no one really wants to see your you going. Not you, I mean, for that joke, you're doing it on purpose. <laughs> but like, if you are preparing and getting loose, then just do it in the back. No audience member really cares about seeing Because that, so. I think stand-up comedy is mainly confidence. Mm. You need to, like, you, you are confident. If you are confident on what you are saying and you convince the people that what you are saying... It's true, it's funny, and not only in the way you wrote it, but also in the way you express it, people will be on your side, so people will laugh. Mm-hmm. I saw amazing com- like uh, comedians with very funny jokes, but not confident of their jokes, and they will bomb. Mm-hmm. If, yeah. if you're having fun, it is way more likely it'll yeah. go well. Have fun. Have just, fun. Be yourself, guys. Yeah, I mean, just go there thinking if it doesn't go well, yeah. wh- who is going to care? Nobody cares about you. What is going to care? Actually, that's a very big point because that's, I remember that with improv because we would go and actually perform shows that people would pay for. And it was, you know, eight of us doing improv. And most of the time it went well, but there would be times where it doesn't go well. Mm-hmm. And it made me realize like, because you'd be embarrassed. You'd be like, fuck, we fucked up. It sucked so much. But then I realized how many times I've seen improv, I do not remember the ones that went horribly. Yeah, I remember the great people. A lot yeah. of improv. Yeah. yeah. And I remember the, oh, this was my favorite joke. Oh, I like this guy. A week from now, if you said hey, to an audience member, hey, who is a, who's terrible? And they'll be like, I don't remember. I think that one guy, what did he say? I don't remember. They won't remember yeah. you. Don't worry about don't it. Don't worry. It's not a big deal. It's and not also, a big deal. Yeah. It's mm. not a big deal. Not a big deal. Unless you say the N word, then people will remember you, or you pull your pants down, which someone did. Mm-hmm. But not in the first time. Oh yeah, it first wasn't his time? first time. It wasn't his first time. Not at all. No, no, no. Mm. He's, he Are performed you? before. That's why I, yeah. I liked it. What? Okay. How he about would. more general? How about huh? more general? He would like it, is what I was saying. Yeah. How about more general first day stuff? Bring friends. Yes or no? <laughs> I, I would not. This, this, <laughs> I didn't. This well, podcast did will sound like two kids having fun, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. and then teacher. teacher coming like, no, again, just stop. 
I asked you guys just for this one episode to just do what I wanted to do when you guys are yeah. cooperating. Yeah, we no, we're almost there. We're almost there. Like okay. two, no, but we are enjoying of, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm having mm. a great time. <laughs> This is exactly what someone says I'm when he's pissed. Time. I'm yeah. having a great time. I feel awesome. I'm yeah. great. We will call this episode uh, How to Do Your First Set slash Two Kids and a Teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll call it that. Um, okay, so no, you wouldn't bring... It depends. If you were the kind of person that your friends are extremely supportive and will laugh for you, yes. If So again, again, this is a question of who you are. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, for instance, I did my... F- that first set after I was doing improv for a long time, my friend saw me do improv. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to do a stand-up set for the first time. Want to come and watch? Because I knew I was already confident on stage. But otherwise, I don't. I didn't want any friends to come. Even sometimes yeah. now I feel like, ooh, I don't know. Because I just, I'm a perfectionist yeah. a little bit. And it's, a, it's completely unreasonable to be sometimes a perfectionist because... You never know how it's going to go, so let, mm-hmm. it, let it be. And it's, but because you care more of the judgment of your friends, that's probably why you don't want your friends to be around. And it's, <laughs> yeah, definitely judgment about me, but also I think, or at least I think this in my head, so I'm I'm not sure if it's quite true, but I, I do believe this, where I want them to be okay and I don't want to worry about them. I have this yeah, also with yeah. DJing. Like, if, I, if they're just like, oh, I love your music, I'm going to come out and party, that's fine. But if they're like, I'm going to see you DJ for the first time, I've never been to a club, <laughs> then, I'm, then I'm always thinking, is everything okay? Do you need a drink? Like, as opposed to actually just being loose and DJing. Yeah. I think now I'm way less, like, I don't care if friends come and I maybe a little bit, if I'm testing new stuff, would prefer if they didn't. But my first time, I think I was pretty confident in what I was writing maybe overconfident don't be overconfident you might bomb um and i it was nice to have them there okay but um yeah depends the on first you time i i did it i went to a rave party the day before and the day of the set i was still high and tired and this fact that i was tired made me feel extremely relaxed on stage because i was like I am so tired that mm-hmm. I cannot be stressed about this. But of course, this is a very like weird so scenario. Do drugs yeah. before? No, no, don't, <laughs> don't. I would say care a lot when preparing, yeah. and then don't care. Yeah, like of the hand. outcome also. Yeah, of the outcome. Like if, if you bomb, it just doesn't matter. Like so many amazing comedians started out horribly yeah. yeah nothing yeah. really matters and nothing matters guys yeah. and also don't give up like don't give up you do the first time it goes like how it goes and then just try it again because you will learn more like we are constantly improving yeah. right yeah. guys I met a guy in uh, Bird Studio which is a club here in Warsaw a DJ there tomorrow and yeah <laughs> tomorrow is the Saturdays well <laughs> <laughs> And he stopped me and he told me, oh, uh, you are, I to- I saw you two times. The first time you started uh, and um, and like a couple of weeks ago and the improvement is amazing. So you can always improve. Even if you think, oh, I did well the first time. But then there, this world is so amazing because there is so much to learn, so many things to experiment about. Yeah. Don't give up. It's, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Comedy is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. And if you do amazing the first time, be prepared that the second time will probably go worse. This is just a thing I see. It happened with me. Mm. Like my second set was one of the worst sets I've ever done. My first set was one of the best sets I've ever done. Jordan isn't bragging. Isn't bragging. <laughs> I'm yeah, very, very even be, keel, humble person. Because yeah. usually you put ah. m- you put much more effort on yeah. the first set ever. Like for example, I never ever rehearsed a set again. Uh-huh. <laughs> you never like I did like I did but not as well as I did it for the first time okay but yeah I think the main thing to drive home here is that if it goes poorly it's fine like do it again right maybe in a different city where no one knows you I'm kidding but uh yeah yeah, yeah the same totally, club totally the next awesome. week go Actually, up again try something yeah. different it's try a different idea. set try a different tactic uh, Jordan wants people to move <laughs> yeah <laughs> everyone For should some move reason. I don't care where you live you should move to a different city yeah but it's actually I mean it could give you confidence to move to another actually, or not move but just like be in visit, another city and you just visit yeah and perform and, yeah 
I, I recommended that to somebody here actually. He was like, Oh, like I want to go up, but it just feels like too much pressure. I was like, Go to Krakow. Yeah, go do to it Krakow. there. Go no one Berlin. knows you there. And if it doesn't go well, like none of us here know. Right. Yeah. Also, because you need to see uh, what is going on uh, in the other cities or in the other clubs. Touring. Tour- no, 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 no. I'm not talking about touring. Uh, it's more about. Not only looking, for example, if you go to the comedy hall Wednesday, it's also good to go to Tuesday because you see other comedians, another type of environment. Yeah. Uh, maybe people are acting different and you can still learn from different things, from mm-hmm. different people. So, great. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks. Bye. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Ciao. So guys, follow the Comedy Hall on Facebook, on Instagram, check out our shows. We will be so happy to talk with you. Also, if you have any suggestion about possible topics for this podcast, reach out. If you want to be part of the podcast, reach out. If you're a comedian, then you stop by Warsaw, come and we will have fun together on stage. So ciao.